Scott, this was a back and forth game until that second quarter, third quarter. What allowed you guys to pull away and build a big lead? Uh, defensive stops. We were we were we were moving our feet. We weren't fouling. Uh, we were getting our hands on on the ball. We were contesting. We were rebounding. We were getting out in transition. And I thought I thought you know we we also during that stretch we missed a lot of good looking threes as well. Uh, but we we competed on the defensive end last game. You know we weren't happy with ourselves. We gave up six and ones. The point guard got six offensive rebounds. We had a couple of technicals. We wanted to come back and 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 get to being what we want to be. And what did you think about uh, Rui Hachimura against Anthony Davis tonight? The dunk and also just the way he played him on both ends. Yeah, he was good. I mean, he was AD is. I mean, he's obviously getting the rust off of his body. He's, I think it's only been what the fourth or fifth fifth game back. He's an MVP type of player if he plays a whole season the way he plays. He's a uh, hard cover, but Rui, I thought he played him. Played him tough. I thought we 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 got into some of his shots. I know he got he got free. You know when we we put the uh, you know the lineup just to get some rotations. Alex was guarding them or our bigs were guarding them. He got free on some open looks on threes. I think he could score some points late. But I thought I thought Rui did a pretty good job on him. Fred. Hey Scott. Speaking of Alex, what what allowed him to make such a difference defending the rim tonight? Well, I, I think he's been pretty good. That's one thing that our defense has gotten better. You know, we've got we got three centers that can that can defend the rim um, pretty good, and it's changed. It's definitely it's changed over the last month. Uh, and I think Gaff is, you know, I think he has a chance to be even better at it. But Alex is Alex is long, and he has a good experience. Uh, he knows where to be. Um, yeah, but I thought he his his minutes changed the game his minutes won the game obviously you know you can talk about brad's timely shots um russell's another triple double but i thought his minutes and his play won the game i'm happy for him because you know out of, out of the three centers sometimes i don't go back to him um but like i told him and all the other three guys there's going to be nights where you get more minutes than rollo rollo didn't play much tonight but i thought he was a factor and he gave us some good minutes as well Ava, um, I doubt you guys are, are focused on this aspect of it, but how rewarding is it to kind of get to show the wider basketball world on a national game against the, the defending champs, just who you guys have become this season? Yeah, I, I love it. I'm glad that, you know, the league was uh, allowed us to be on, you know, national TV, ESPN. Um, I thought we, I thought we, we've earned that with what we've done and, we, we're not just, I mean, we got two really high, high level players, but our other guys are coming along. They're, they're working, they're, they're scrappy. They're finding a way. They're finding how, ooh, how ooh doesn't get any credit. He just goes in there and battles and competes and Ish came in and, and gave us good minutes. We just, all, all of us are chipping away and, and improving and, and getting better as the season going on. It's obviously, it was a, a good win for us to bounce back from the last uh, two nights ago, but it's good to be on ESPN. Good to, you know, to get a win against uh, one of the best teams in the league. And um, when was the last time you saw Ish dunk in a game? I don't think I, I don't, I don't really remember if he, I think maybe a couple, I don't know. I just don't know if I've seen it, but that was, it was a, it was pretty impressive. I didn't think he had a, I didn't think he had enough legs. I mean, he's still remember he's been out for two months. You can argue he has fresh legs, uh, but sometimes your legs are dead after you've been out for that long. But he was, I mean, he's athletic. He doesn't get enough credit. Everybody just thinks he's quick, but he's a good athlete. He gets up on his jump shot. He contests shots. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was a fun moment for our team. You know, they, they love when little, little guards dunk like Ish and myself. Matt Paris. Yeah, Scott, the, the Bulls lost tonight, so you guys are up two games with ten games left. Uh, yeah. Just what do you what do you make of that from it, that where you guys are at, and then how much gap, ground you've gained too over the last few weeks? Well, I definitely look at the the league as a as a fan, as a coach, as a competitor. I follow it, but I really just focusing on what we do. If we take care of our take care of business, we know you know we got one more game this month. 
And then we have a very, very difficult month. The, the, the May, May's tough. And those nine games, every team is fighting for either playoff life or playoff position. But we're just going to go out there and compete game in, game out. We've got some good players that, that want to do that. We know where we are. We know what we're doing. Uh, like I said, we just, we just got to do our job. And, you know, it, it always takes care of itself. We've been through a lot this year. And there's no reason for us to stop and relax now and take a deep breath. We got we got some more in us. We're going to just keep fighting and keep playing for hard for one another. And when did you make a Chandler Hutchinson giving him a shot? I thought it was good minutes. You know what? I've been kicking myself just about every game. Like, I got to find a way. I got to find a way to get them in. Uh, I We need that wing athletic, uh, wiry athlete. And I think he could be that guy. I mean, he has still a lot to learn. He's been out a, most of the year. Uh, but I thought he was active. I thought, I thought he had good minutes, and then he had some minutes that we can work on. And that's what sometimes when you have game film, that's what he's with Coach Brown and Tony's going to keep working with him. But I like I like the fact that he came in and, and not having played in a while. I mean, he played against Oklahoma, uh, uh, the, I think a seven or eight minute stint. But I think that says a lot about our staff. We work with guys and keep giving guys, pumping guys with confidence and and work. So when they do get called upon, they can have a, a good game like he played tonight. Zach. Hey, Coach, uh, what did you think of Rui's dunk on AD? Uh, last year, especially, you talked about his need to be aggressive finishing around the rim. Yeah, I think it was good. And that's what he has to do. He's Rui's athletic. He has big hands. He has good timing. And, and that was a, that was obviously a pretty, pretty cool moment. That's not easy to do. He's not easy to dunk on. He's a he's seven feet tall, long armed, athletic and defensive minded. Uh, but he, he, it was one of those quick dunks, but it was, it was another good moment for our team. And when you're, when you're a high level defender, you get dunked on at times. And AD is, you know, if he probably was healthy all year, he'd probably be one of the, might be the defensive player of the year. He's hard to, he's hard to score. And I got a lot of respect for how he plays. DA. Scott, you, you, I think Brad had 27 tonight, um, but it seemed like the balance, there was more balance offensively than maybe there's been most of the season. Did you, is, is that something you think is repeatable? I mean, whether it's, it doesn't matter whether it was Len with 18 or, or you know, Rolo with, with eight, you seem to have a lot of people involved tonight. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's ideally, we'd love to do that, but, you know, we the way they were playing, Brad, they were jumping on them with their bigs and even before Brad even got the ball, was able to turn the corner. They put another guy on him, and Brad made some great passes. And, it, and it's crazy that he only had three assists, but he had probably about seven or eight hockey assists. And those are the ones that we want to start to chase um, our offense and make that defense chase us around. And I thought when they – and he's gotten really good. He's been like last year, he was triple team. Last two or three years, he's been triple team with all of the injuries we had. Um, but I think uh, tonight his – his playmaking helped everybody get a lot of points and the way they play, you got to, Brad's not about, he's not, he doesn't want, he doesn't care about the scoring. Yeah. Um, he wants to, he wants to keep playing the right way. He's a, he's a, that's how he is. He's a, he's a basketball purist. He likes to play the right way. He wants to do the right things. Yeah. And did that, so did that feel like more like playoff basketball? Cause you know, teams are going to try to take him away and make him give up the ball and other people have to be ready to kind of like, like Chandler was when, when he got the ball, got the opportunity. Yeah. I mean, that's what they're going to do. I mean, look at, we haven't shot the ball. Well, one of our best shooters was 0 for six from three. <laughs> so we have to figure out ways. And if they're going to, and then teams are smart, they're going to put two on, on Brad, but he's good enough to score 30 at night, yeah. even with that. But our other guys, we've got to have timely shot makers. We've got to get good cuts. We've got to have offensive rebounders. And I think we also have to be able to get to the free throw line. And that's what we do. That's what we do. That's what we've been doing. And, 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 and I know, I know I keep saying this and it's been four months about we're going to get hot and we're going to stay hot from the three point line. But you know, Russell, you know, never, you keep, you just keep sometimes I myself included, we sometimes we just discount what he brings and that those triple doubles and 18 rebounds. That's uh, those are crazy, crazy numbers. And it's mm -hmm. not Gaff and Alex and Rolo and Rui, they're not boxing their guys out so Russell can get 18 rebounds. Everybody wants to get rebounds, but he goes out and gets them. Last question, Alex. 
Hey, Scott, not sure how much you were paying attention to this after the instruments dunk, but um, Russell Westbrook kind of went over to the fans and raised his arms up, hyping them up, and it was kind of maybe the biggest ovation we've seen here in the last year or more than a year. Um, what, what do you take from a moment like that in terms of maybe you're in the game, but, but uh, you know, how does it feel to see something like that in this arena tonight? I mean, it was bittersweet, actually. Yeah, I, I love the fact that the 2,000 people did able to get it, but th those are the moments you say you, you wish that everybody would have been in the seats. We would have had the place sold out because what Russell brings – our fans are going to love it live. I mean, they love it on TV. I mean, I, I like what Brad said. I like what my one of my former players said. I, I love the guy. One of my favorite players ever coaching was Pert. And that's so true. The narrative about Russell is so wrong. And But I, I, love, I love this about Russell. He doesn't give a, a you know, a, a crap. Um, but but what, he, what he does – to the inside the arena is I've seen it for, you know, seven years when it sold out and I, this year, obviously with the fan situation, it's, it lifts the spirit of the group, the fans get into it and I miss it. I miss it. I, you know, hopefully, you know, next season we have everything normal, but what he brings is the intensity and the fans love it and they feel it and they, and our players do the same thing, but that was, that was a selfless play. He wanted those guys to fill Ish's, you know, dunk. That, that, that fired our team up. What's going on, Alex? What's going on, Alex? Um, what made a difference for you? What do you? I should say, what do you think helped you be so effective defending the rim tonight? Uh, nothing really. Just trying to, you know, just trying to be there when, when guys get rid of the dribble. Just try to be, you know, they're early, be early on my rotations and you know, challenge the shots. I wasn't trying to do nothing different. And and you guys run obviously this this really unconventional three center rotation. Uh, what is what is that like for the culture with you and and Daniel and and Rolo? Like, what are your guys' relationships like, kind of working within that three man rotation? We got a great relationship. We're just trying to, you know, once you get your minutes, you're just trying to play as hard as you can. Uh, you know, being impactful as much as you can. And then, you know, usually we get six, six, six minutes, and then whoever plays the best finishes the games. And, I mean, I, I think it's fair. You know, and, uh, you know, whoever plays the best plays most minutes. Chase. Alex, when you think back to when you first joined this team in the middle of the season, um, what was it like then and, and how much has changed now just in terms of uh, the, the vibe and, and with the way you've been playing? I mean, the vibe changed because, you know, we've been winning. It's a lot, a lot more fun. You know, they say uh, winning cures everything, like it cures cancer. I think that's that's how it is. We just, we've been winning and, then, you know, we just feel the feel of that energy, feel the feel of that positive energy. Guys just playing a little harder. You know, we just, I mean, we see the opportunities right there for us to make the playoffs. So we just, everybody just giving everything they have and uh, we understand what, what it takes. And um, what, what did you think about, uh, there are obviously a lot of big dunks tonight by your team, but what did you think about the one in particular by Rui on Anthony Davis? That, that, that was crazy. And I, I, I thought Hush, Hush's one was, he, he got he got very high on that one. I thought uh, the Hush one was the craziest one. Christos. Hello, Alex. Hope you're doing well. Nine well, wins in the last 10 games. How's that feeling? And how would you describe the mood in the locker room? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Nine wins in the last 10 games for your team. How is that, uh, that feeling for your team? And how could you describe the mood? I mean, it's amazing. I mean, we're just winning. Like I said, we, we understand how, how important all these games is. We've got another 10 games to go. Uh, you know, we just we understand we, we got a chance to make the playoffs. And, you know, we had a bad season, but you know, if we, if we finish strong and make the playoffs, people are going to remember the end of the season. That's how that's how it always works. If we make the playoffs, we finish strong, and it's going to end up being a great season. And I, I feel like when we play at our best, we, we I mean, we would have, we would, we, uh, we can compete with the best team. So we just got to finish strong. Hey, Rui. Uh, first of all, um, I, I have to ask you about your your dunk on Anthony Davis. Um, that was quite the play. Uh, 
How, how would you describe what happened there? I mean, first I thought I missed it, so I had no idea what's going on. So, and I looked at it, and Ross was blocking it. So, and everybody's like, you know, kind of flex on it. So I'm like, oh, I, you know. But yeah, it was, you know, it was one of those, you know, I had to, you know, I, had to, I always get blocked, so you know, I had to finish it strong, you know. And yeah. And uh, just how are you feeling as you come back from the injury, and uh, you know, I'm sure continue to get better by the day. We're good, you know, uh, especially we've been playing good and uh, we won last, you know, 10 games out of 12 or something like that. So, you know, it's, it's been great. And, you know, team kind of start getting together. Um, yeah, like people like uh, we talk about last game, you know, we start off kind of bad, you know, defensively. And today, we I think we defensively, we are pretty good locked in and from the beginning. And, yeah, that's why we got this win. So. Matt Paris. Yeah. Hey, Ruri, of the four dunks, yours, Daffords, Hutchinson's, and Ishmith, who are you the most impressed by? I mean, you know, I think Hachi was, he, he, did, he did a good one. I feel like, you know, um, I saw him dunking, and DG was dunking like that. And so I thought I had to do it too. So, yeah, but Ish, Ish was the one, yeah. I think I'll give it Ish. <laughs> he's a, he's a, he got the best dance now, yeah. Did you know he can hop like that? No, and then it's, it's, it's crazy because uh, the first half I was talking to somebody, uh, asking him, like, you know, uh, if he can dunk, you know, he can dunk. And uh, he actually did it the second half. So now I was like, oh, okay, yeah. And then you guys are two games up in, in the win column over for the 10th seed over the Bulls. Just what have you, you guys have climbed a lot in the standings. What have you made of your progress of being able to climb the standings the way that you guys have? Oh, no, I feel like, you know, we start playing together more, you know. And defensively, I think we're like the top five in the league right now. And I think that's helping us. And especially right now, the big span really good. You know, they protecting the rim. Um, they finish it, you know, the rim and stuff. So, yeah, I think, yeah, we just got to, the every game is very really important for us right now. So, we just got to play every game and, then, yeah, get into the playoffs. Just to interrupt, Russ will be speaking in the primary Zoom if anyone needs to head over. Um, John White, you're next. Hey, Rui, congratulations on the victory tonight. I just want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, with De Denny Agnia out, where do you guys think you need to fill in and step up in that regard? You know, he was a, uh, he was a guy guarding the, um, uh, you know, wing player. He's a he is six nine. He's a, he got a good body. Um, you know he can move his feet. So you know defensively we gotta you know literally even like you know that was started you know uh, I was uh, small to compare to other other starters you know, other teams. So I think we just gotta help each other more a little more. Uh, and then rebound you know he he was good rebounder. So I think those are stuff uh, we gotta fix it. Um, you know since uh, Danny's out. And how tough do you think it becomes down the stretch here with the playoffs looming to not do a lot of, you know, scoreboard watching and, you know, watching the standings and just keep up with you guys, your winning streak right now? Well, what do you mean by that? So you, what would you guys have to do to keep winning and continue uh, how you're playing now? Uh, I think uh, defense, you know, uh, if you're winning, well, our defense is great, you know. Um, we always – uh, if we, you guys, you guys know, like all those games we win in, um, our defense, you know, fantastic. You know, we always play good defense and offense. We, you know, we always play good. So, so we got to share, share, the, share the ball. You know, uh, we got good shooters. So I think the defense is the key, and uh, the rebounds the one to come to the next one. Yeah. Hey Russ, um, we just talked to Rui, and he said that he thought he had missed his dunk on Anthony Davis until he looked over and he saw you laughing. Uh, I'm just wondering, what was your reaction to, to that play? Uh, I mean, when Rui's playing and aggressive at the rim, um, you know, he's sneaky athletic. He, he sneaks people in. A lot of times people don't know he's capable of doing that. But um, I was screaming. He didn't even know what was happening. Uh, I'm glad he, he's able to see my reaction um, and finally uh, kind of know he made it. And you're now only five triple doubles behind the, the all-time record. Uh, Oscar Robertson. 
Um, how aware are you of, of how close you're getting? And uh, just what are your thoughts as, as you get close to a, a record that stood for 47 years? Um, you know, you know, as a, like I, I've always said, I don't, I don't take this game for granted. I don't take uh, the opportunity to be able to play uh, for granted. Um, and when I get on the floor, I, I give everything I have until I, I don't have left, nothing left in the tank. And, you know, just being in a conversation with guys like Oscar is, is a blessing in itself, man. I'm just uh, super honored uh, to be able to have uh, something like that in reach. Ava. Russ, what can you say about the kind of scoring uh, by committee that you guys did tonight? You obviously got big minutes from Alex, big minutes from Ish Smith, just guys who are kind of stepping up who aren't always in the spotlight. Yeah, I mean, it's good. I mean, we have uh, so many guys that work day, tell off, uh, you know, when they're not playing. Uh, guys like Hutch, who hadn't played in a while, did a great job tonight. Uh, just having so many people um, impact the game, um, you know, makes my job a lot easier. Um, and my job is to make sure I can make the game easy for those guys. And uh, tonight, uh, they did an amazing job of just um, having an imprint on the game. Fred. Hey, Russ, uh, speak, speaking on that topic, when, when you guys use so many guys in your rotation, what is what is your job like as a floor general, just making sure a guy like Kutch who hasn't played in a while stays comfortable when he's out there? Make it easy. That's my job. Um, I mean, I honestly believe that um, you know, I'm, if not, uh, you know, I feel like I'm one of the best playmakers in this league, um, uh, for many reasons, um, just because I'm able to make sure I can make my teammates better. And that's a part of my job as a leader. And as a point guard, you got to better make others around you better. Um, and I've take so much pride in doing it every night. Um, regardless of who's on the floor, regardless of who it is, I try to utilize what they do best, um, think the game, understand the game, um, and make sure that I can help those guys out any way that I can. Matt Paris. Hey Russ, uh, the Wizards haven't been on national television uh, since 2019, I, I believe. Just, you know, you guys have been working really hard. What did it mean to have a, a performance like that kind of in, in the national spotlight? Um, you know, we've been playing like this for a minute, you know. Sure. When social media and everything, everybody can see what you're doing if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. That's how I feel. If it's on national TV or not, um, if we're playing the way he's supposed to be playing, then people will catch notice. Sure. And then, you know, you guys have 10 games left around the league. It seems like there's a lot at stake for, you know, not just you guys, but a lot of teams. What do you kind of make of how so many teams are in still in contention technically going down the stretch here? Um, you know, my, honestly, my job is to make sure around here, organization, our team is locked in. Um, we focus on one game at a time and take care of business. And then at the end of the year, we see where we end up. Thanks. Yeah. Russ, they, they came into the game number one in defense. Um, and you guys had a lot of balance tonight. I know, I think Brad had 27, um, but a lot of guys contributed. Did that feel like a playoff type of game in terms of an, a, a really good defense trying to take your primary away and you all having to depend on other guys? Um, definitely. But, you know, we, we have so many guys in the locker room that can make plays. Um, can make the game easy. Um, and like you said, Brad didn't have to do um, you know, his usual uh, tonight, but making others better, double teaming him. Um, but our guys did an amazing job down the line. And, uh, you know, down the stretch, we're going to need everyone in the locker room to be able to, to go out and, and make plays. Alex. Hey, Russ, I wanted to ask you about a moment after Ish Smith's dunk. Um, you kind of walked over to the fans, raised your arms up, hyping them up over there, kind of shared a moment with them, and the whole arena kind of erupted. What, what's a moment like that like for you personally, emotionally, after the year we've been through the last year, and just to have the fans in here, and obviously a limited capacity, but just what's it like to, yeah, to have that I mean, experience? It's, uh, it was, it, that's fun, man. It, this game is fun. You should enjoy it, um, and that's how I look at it. It's fun. As much as I love competing and love going out and uh, you know, winning games, this game is fun, man. And the fans, uh, we've missed so much, and you know, especially here in DC, and to get them out um, and get them, I'm excited about what we're doing. Uh, Want to make sure that I, I show that I appreciate their support, appreciate them 
coming out and cheering, you know, with still COVID still going on and coming out supporting us and, um, you know, just happy to be able to have them in the building. And a really quick follow-up about that. Uh, I asked Coach Brooks about the, that same moment, and he said, you know, he just loves the energy that you bring to the team, to the fans, and he can't wait to see you do it in front of a, uh, a full arena as well. He, he also said, you know, the narrative people may have about you, you know, some uh, in the media or, or from fans or whatever, he said it's totally wrong, and he says he loves that, you know, you don't give a crap about, you know, what other people think or say, you know, what do you, you kind of have to say about that and, and to, you know, to maybe doubters out there, people that might say things that, that, you know, maybe doesn't truly represent who you are and what you stand for in the NBA. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've addressed this many times um, and I'll, you know, I won't continue to address it, but there is not a teammate, um, a coach, um, anybody that can say I'm a bad teammate, bad guy, bad person. Um, I am, a person that wants to see others do well. And that's simply it. I want to see my teammates do well. I want to see coaches do well. I want to see everybody do well, um, just because that is who I am as a person. That's my personality. Um, the way I play the game and who I am as a person, um, it's not the same thing. Um, I play the game uh, to win and compete. Um, I feel like um, when you play in something, you want to compete. I don't have to be friendly. I don't have to be nice. I'm going out to uh, destroy. Um, and then off the, off the court, um, I'm able to, to open up and, and make sure that I'm also a human being. And I think that's the biggest thing that we all have to understand is that um, myself and other athletes, we're human beings. We are not, this is not a, you know, a show or anything where you can just say anything about a person and, and, and run with it. Um, and for me, I always want to make sure that that's very clear. Like we're all human. We all make mistakes. Uh, but I've also been real and true to who I am. Um, and like, like you said, I don't really care what nobody think about me, think about uh, anything that I'm doing um, because I, I know who I am. I know um, what I'm on this earth to do and that's to be able to help serve others, to be able to help my community, to be able to use this platform to be able to share um, uh, across the world and uh, be a positive influence to role models. And that's what I'll continue to do. Thanks, Russ. Yeah. All right, last question, Neil. To Russ, a question not about the game, but about your upcoming documentary, Tulsa Burning. Um, when did you first get involved with that, learn about that, want to get, you know, that out there? And what do you hope people will take away from it? Um, well, um, you know, I was in Oklahoma for 11 years or so, and I was able to visit Tulsa and, and able to kind of understand uh, at the time, Black Wall Street, where it was at, uh, what it meant to Tulsa, what it meant to uh, African-American communities across the world. And um, I was just in shock that nobody told the story and told it the right way. Um, so I was uh, super lucky and blessed to be able to partner and uh, with Stanley, with Stanley <clears throat> Nelson and um, come up with the film Tulsa's Burning. And uh, I'm so excited about it. Um, blessed that history uh, picked it up and, and is going to show the world exactly what happened. But uh, not just that, it, it allows us as as people to understand um, how important our history can shape our future. And, um, you know, I'm excited to, uh, for, for the rest of you, everyone to be able to see the film, so.